From Montauk to Massapequa, Bayside to Bay Ridge, and all points in between, this is For Your Island, a show about the people and places of Long Island. And welcome to the season premiere of For Your Island. I'm Melissa Rothschild. And I'm Kristen McNally. Thanks for being here with us. You know, Melissa, as the seasons change, so do the activities on Long Island. With the beautiful weather still on the horizon, there's so much to take advantage of here. From taking a stroll through a botanical garden or relaxing cruise on the North Shore, FYI will take you to these places and more. But first, we're going to take you to the limit. That's because the sky's the limit at Skydive Long Island. Experience the thrill of dropping 10,000 feet from the sky and landing safely on the ground. It's the exclusive site for Long Islanders who want to live life on the edge. It was a long drop, but FYI wasn't afraid. FYI went to Skydive Long Island, the only drop zone located on the island, to see what this extreme sport is all about. It's a feeling like no other, you know, to fall out of a perfectly good airplane and uh, basically fly down under a parachute. Um, most people that do come here are very, very you know, skeptical in the beginning. They're very nervous about it. And uh, I've even had people cry and get really upset. And the minute they land, the first thing they say is, thank you for providing this experience with me. You know, thank you so much for, for allowing me to jump. So it's definitely everybody in, especially Long Island, it's one of the most beautiful drop zones in the United States. Uh, I've jumped all over, the, all over the United States, and this is the absolute most beautiful in Long Island. Well, skydiving is something I always wanted to do. Um, I like to do exciting things like roller coasters and all that kind of stuff, so I figured jumping out of a plane would be exciting. A little scary, but, you know, if it wasn't scary, it wouldn't be all that exciting. <laughs> you can't explain it. It's just, what a rush. You know, it's, uh, I got started on this at the end of last year, and I couldn't, I just can't stop. It's like an addiction. <laughs> it's like a drug. Best drug you ever could do. It's intense. Sometimes when you're doing a, a certain, a real difficult jump and it just comes off good, it's just a, yeah! It's not like a very physical and there is no pressure on your joints or you know anywhere. It's so exhilarating. You love it. It's better than sex, I think. <laughs> the sport of skydiving is incredible. You can be anywhere on this planet and you bump into somebody who's even done just one tandem skydive. They don't have to be a skydiver and right away there's an instant connection with that person. I think uh, everybody can skydive. If you want to do it, um, you can do it. There's people who were, you know, paralyzed even from waist down and the guys took them on a tandem jump. So if somebody wants to experience skydiving, people really can. I've been skydiving for 11 years now and when I wake up in the morning to come skydiving, I just have this, you know, rush of heart, you know, my heart just starts beating faster and I just get excited about it. I just want to be here, I want to show up, I love everything there is about skydiving. I love taking students on tandem skydives, I like to pull from their vibes of, you know, how they experience the sport. So to me, no, skydiving never gets old, never. That was <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. It was amazing. I mean, but well, we wouldn't be able to do anyway. It was, it was great. It was, I would recommend everybody to go at least once. Wow, what a rush. Do you think they would accept frequent flyer miles? Well, Kristen, if they do, feel free to take some of mine. I would much rather have my feet firmly planted on the ground. So while you're falling from the sky, I'll be visiting Long Island's own Clark Botanic Garden, where you can take a brisk walk, enjoy the scenery, or just sit under a tree and relax. FYI recently took a trip to this hidden oasis.
Hidden deep in Long Island lies a beautifully designed 12-acre living museum with thousands of garden plants chosen for their beauty. Unknown to many, Clark Botanical Gardens is located in Nassau County and is a center for botanical lovers of all ages. The garden was started about around uh, 1970 and it was the family, the Dwight family, the gentleman had willed it to his wife, who was Fanny Dwight. It was willed in her name to the town. It offers, for the most part, to the community a wide range of services. We try to create a community nexus, since we're solely dependent, pretty, for the most part, on volunteerism. I volunteer here because I think this is one of the most beautiful hidden spots in Nassau County. We really try to help to make this garden a better place for, for the residents just a wonderful opportunity to, for people to take a stake in their community, to show they care about their community, and Clark is a peaceful place for them to do that. I like Clark Garden because it not only is a beautiful spot, but a very educational spot. We're training the public and children to protect the environment and to appreciate it. Well, the children sign up and um, we have like a crash course in why organic gardening is so important to the universe and, and the world and all of that. And then we begin by planting and every child gets their own bed and then um, we have the community section where we do all the big crops like corn and squash and pumpkins and gourds. So it's elaborated more towards a personalized garden than, than overly community but we, add, we still have the community involvement with it. It's really an ideal opportunity for, for people in this neighborhood to come together, or for the island for that, for that aspect. But, you know, people can come from all over the island and see what we offer here. Clark currently has, we have three, three ponds that connect to each other. Um, we have everything from Rose Garden. We have a, a tremendous spruce garden on the property. They have more species of bamboo here than anywhere in the Northeast country. One of the things we have also, you know, we have tons of ferns. And you just really get a good education as far as, you know, different types of species of plants and how they interact with each other. Because by the wildlife here, you can see what wildlife is feeding on that. The garden isn't just about plants, it's more about the community and how the community can come together and you know as much as the garden grows we supply an opportunity for the community to grow together toward a end result uniting us. I believe in the preservation of open space probably more than anything I mean it's really for me it's what are we going to leave behind for the, the next generation and it's uh, definitely one of the, the island's most beautiful gardens. What a perfect place to spend a sunny autumn afternoon with family and friends. And after spending a beautiful day at the garden, you can spend your not so sunny days at an enlightening nature preserve. Taka Pasha Museum is one place that will not only provide education for the kids, but will offer you access to some of Long Island's creepiest critters. Birds, bats, and tarantulas, oh my. FYI, took a look at the Taka Pasha Museum. I'm a, my name is Fred Smith. I work here at Takapusha and I take care of the animals. We have over 44 different species in this museum and it's quite a variety. Now in the back room of this uh, museum, we have what is called a bat room. We have eight bats, and they're called Egyptian fruit bats. And that's what they eat, this fruit, nothing else. They get uh, bananas, apples, pears, plums, and they get uh, grapes and melons. They love melons. In the last cage we have is a crow, and it's a common crow from this particular area. And this crow has been noted to scratch and attack people. And by scratching the children and whatnot in this school, we had to take care of that owl, that, excuse me, that crow and put him in the cage. He cannot be released. On weekends, at uh, Friday, uh, correction, Saturday and Sunday at 2 o'clock, we have a show, a live animal show, where we bring up all the animals from the different rooms. 
and, and exhibit them and talk about them in front of the audience. Now we also have, uh, let's see, we have a chinchilla, and this chinchilla is from South America, and the chinchilla is a very cute little animal, makes a wonderful pet. We have a tarantula here, we have the hissing cockroaches, we have the monk parakeets, also the area behind us is about 80 acres of ground and uh, it's a beautiful walk. And uh, let's see, we have turtles of all kinds painted. We have all kinds of terrapins. And when the children come here, they're really astounded what they see. And they really love it as far as educational factors. Takaposha Preserve is located north of Merrick Road in Seaford, Long Island. For more information, call 516-571-7443. Geez, those kids didn't even seem afraid to play with the tarantulas. <laughs> well, if those animals were a little too much for you to handle, Kristen, you might want to take a load off on a tropical cruise. Well, it's not so tropical, but what a view. Located just off the North Shore, the Discovery Wetlands Pontoon Cruise offers everyone a chance to spend an enjoyable afternoon on the water and learn a thing or two along the way. FYI took a smooth sail into these waters. For most of recorded human history, people's view of marshes can be summed up in a couple of words. Stinky, insect infested, mucky, and really not worth anything except perhaps as a place to fill in and build a parking lot. And of course this attitude has led to the destruction of many marshes. My name is Bill Wise and I'm the Associate Director of the Marine Sciences Research Center at Stony Brook University. And today I was serving as the naturalist aboard the, uh, the Discovery cruise boat. a prepared uh, text that we ask all of naturalists to give that covers a variety of points, uh, most of them having to do with the geological history of the North Shore of Long Island. Additionally, as uh, different birds and organisms and things are spotted from the boat, the naturalist is expected to point these out to the people on board and to describe what's going on and perhaps to uh, interpret uh, for the uh, paying passengers what they're seeing. This is a particularly beautiful part of the North Shore of Long Island uh, and it's, it's an enjoyable hour and a half. What we've given them is a bit more knowledge about how the marsh system works and about how human activities can impact the marsh. I thought it was important to bring the children along on the cruise today because to learn about the history of Long Island that I don't think they learn really anywhere else and about the present preserving the marshlands and the wetlands. Well, I think that people come out of the experience with a better understanding of the interaction between human activities and these sensitive natural areas and the importance of regulating human activities so that they don't disturb or despoil these, uh, these areas that are both beautiful and sensitive. It's a shame that wetlands are so endangered. It makes you think twice before mistreating nature's smallest treasures. 
now it's time to take a short break. Coming up next, a softer side to FYI. Find out how you can make a difference in a young child's life when Four Year Island returns. Eisenhower Park was first established in 1944. Since then, it's been a safe haven to many. On a typical day, Long Islanders can be caught exploring and taking in all the beauty the park has to offer. Come out today, visit Eisenhower Park, and join the community as we celebrate the beauty of Long Island. There's a better way to have fun with history. It's okay, Amelia. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. On three. One. Yes! Um, you know, so I was just thinking, just trim the ends just a little I got it from here, Monsieur Salon type guy. Hey! Today, everybody, is Pixie Cut Day. We're gonna it's... take it real short, and then we're gonna dye it. Jet black. The look that says, I scribble dark lyrics in my journal. No Pixie Cut. It just says, I've got issues! I don't have issues! Well, you will after this haircut. Pixie Cut it is! back to FYI. Our next story shows how one organization strives to help out families in need, as well as one little girl's tremendous courage in fighting a debilitating disease. The Children's Cancer Society takes steps to help out families having financial difficulties for their young children diagnosed with cancer. The name alone, Have a Heart, says it all. FYI took a look at this heartfelt story. Our mission here at Have a Heart is to enhance the quality of life of children with cancer and to support their family with their financial hardships. We happen to be doing very well as far as assisting these families that have children uh, with cancer and that really have serious financial problems. One of the children that we're helping, her name is Samantha. She was treated with radiation, which um, deteriorated part of the jawbone, and she needs to have reconstructive surgery each year until she's finished growing to sort of fill out her face. Have a Heart's helped out tremendously. They helped us sell financially so we could pay all our bills, and it's just been a weight off us and so we could look towards her. We were told at one point she had an hour to live, and it was the worst time of our life. The role is an ongoing role, and I'm hoping now that Have Our Hearts helped us out and she's done with treatment that pretty soon I'll go back to work and we'll be able to do everything together. We're helping another little boy. His name is Nicholas, and he is three years old. Um, he's a doll as well, and he has giant cell fibroblastoma. He's actually the 13th known case worldwide of this such type of cancer. And the child is very young, three-year-old child. Uh, the family just got uh, $17,000 worth of medical bills. We're helping that family with a large portion of that bill. We do need a lot of help and volunteers. I felt it was time to give something back to the community. And what better cause could you have than to help a child that's really struggling? The uh, Belmore Street Fair, they gave us a spot uh, right away at their festival. Uh, they didn't charge us, which was very good and the people were very generous to us. It's a great organization. I would only hope that, God forbid, one of my children got sick one day, that an organization like this would be able to help me and my family just like it's helping another family and other families. <laughs> They're getting to learn through our efforts uh, and being in front of the public and giving them the brochures on these children that we're helping. The response is just overwhelming. We did very well there and that money is gonna go 
uh, to help these children. We rely on our community for sponsorships and volunteerism. We are always looking for volunteers. We will need people um, on board that are, that are good communicators and um, that enjoy doing things like this. We're going to keep up our efforts. We're growing and we're going to be getting more and more families to help. And this is what we're here for, the Have a Heart Children's Cancer Society uh, is here to help these families. Knowing that this organization is making such a difference in their lives means so much. It's a great way to get involved in the community and at the same time so rewarding. Another organization with a huge heart is Little Shelter on Long Island. Animal overpopulation has become such an issue here on Long Island. Little Shelter is striving to help homeless animals by placing them in a loving home. FYI, visit a Little Shelter to see what their programs are all about. Nurturing care and dedication, Little Shelter has become a safe haven for abused, abandoned, and severely ill animals. Our amazingly committed staff makes the furry visitors feel right at home while waiting for a permanent, loving, adoptive home. I'm Jody Record, and I'm the office manager at Little Shelter. My name is Kathleen, and I am an adoption counselor at Little Shelter. And what I do is help to match people with uh, the right pet for their family. I'm responsible for the administrative um, side of the shelter. Um, I also help with dog adoptions when needed. I help people organize their pet burials as we have a pet cemetery here as well. And I also uh, organize our special events. The history of Little Shelter, it was opened in 1927 uh, by a lady called Anna Honeyhouse. So this year is our 75th anniversary. Our shelter is geared toward both rescuing animals and helping people find the right animal. We educate people and we want to help save the, those animals that are, are in the municipal pounds awaiting death right now. On a given day, um, there is, I would say, anywhere between over 200 uh, puppies, dogs, kittens and cats at the shelter. Most of which are kit, cats and kittens right now. We have a large cattery, open space cattery, so it's probably about 250 cats and 50 dogs. The adoption rate at Little Shelter is usually about 15 per week. Um, usually on the weekends for cats and dogs it's a little more. It can be that in one day. Our Adopt-a-thon, it's an effort to um, educate the public about the homeless problem in the United States. It's basically about people coming, having a good time and finding a, a pet. We take our pets out, we parade them around. We have an adoption application which everyone must fill out. It asks a series of questions and the, the idea of that is to get the best fit with your family. Well, we do have one funny story about a dog that was adopted from us. Uh, his name was Harry and his owners called out one day and uh, he, he had been lost. They had lost him. Um, so we sent out a search party looking for Harry. We eventually found him in Syosset. He had got on a train, I think in Northport, and got off at Syosset. So he had taken a train ride for himself. And uh, we happily, a lady had found him and we happily re reunited him with his owners even though he was a couple of towns away. Our website, www.littleshelter.com, includes many things. It includes um, all of our dogs and cats that are currently up for adoption, and also uh, a bit of brief history on the animals, their ages, and how we're placing them. We also have um, employment opportunities on the website. We have um, additional information for sponsoring animals. You can also um, look at our website to see a uh, history of our sanctuary in upstate New York and all of our animals up there. Uh, and also you can see sponsorship of animals through the website. And we also have uh, rescue organizations which you can reach through our website. We also have a sponsor program at Little Shelter that includes uh, any pet that's for adoption um, can be sponsored by someone who would like to give a monthly donation. You're very sweet. Did anyone ever tell you that? <laughs> Those cats and dogs are so cute. I just want to take one home. There are going to be some very lucky families on Long Island, not to mention their new furry friends. One notable family on Long Island has made their own type of contributions to the community. The Enneman family has been famous for making delicious cakes, but what you might not know is that lately they have also been bringing savory wine to the North Fork. FYI decided to leave you with a taste of vino from the Enneman's very own Martha Clara Vineyards.
Welcome to Martha Clara Vineyards. Thank you. Thank you. Are you familiar with Entenmann Cakes? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Robert Entenmann and his daughter, Jackie Connolly Entenmann, are the owners of Martha Clara Vineyards. Um, Mr. Entenmann's estate is right uh, next door. And Martha Clara, if you want to take a look at this label, mm -hmm. is Robert Entenmann's mother. Oh, really? Is that nice? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, she ha has passed, but the wine and Martha Clara will live to eternity. Uh, I am the general manager here at the vineyard, and this uh, vineyard is the oldest vines are seven years old. It used to be a thoroughbred horse farm. Martha Clara, who worked at the bakery all her life, at the Entenmann's Bakery, is the mother of Robert Entenmann. So seven years ago, vines were planted. And we have planted 13 varieties, which will enable us to produce 21 varieties of wine. The land size is 200 acres, of which there are 108 acres planted. It's laser planted. We get 1,200 plants to the acre, as opposed to somewhere between 700 and 900 plants to the acre if you were to do it by hand. So when you look at the rows, they're dead straight, the plant spacing is dead even, and it's close row planting as well. Um, well, we love Martha Clara. Martha Clara is our favorite winery on the North Fork. You know, from time to time, we get to come out and do some tastings. And we have a harvest festival going on today. Uh, these are the people that are going to come, hear some live music, take horse drawn carriage rides. They're also going to be brought into the vineyard to harvest. Whoever is interested and is willing to come along with me, uh, we're going to be dropping fruit uh, and we're going to teach them and um, educate them what our goal is, what our principal rules behind growing a high quality of uh, vines is. Ms. Tantamond <coughs> chose this road. He's been doing this for the past seven years and I believe that uh, if he's going to stick with it, if he's going to have a good management and uh, people that are very dedicated, he's going to succeed as well as he succeeded with the uh, bakery. Mm -hmm. The family definitely looks like they know how to wine and dine. I think I'm going to take off to the North Fork for a little wine tasting of my own. Well, speaking of taking off, this concludes our first show of the season. We at FYI thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed our adventures on and around Long Island. We leave you today with the sights and sounds of beautiful fall afternoon at Morgan Park. For FYI, I'm Melissa Rothschild. And I'm Kristen McNally. Thank you and join us soon for another edition of FYI. Entertainment presentation.